If you don't know anything about Asia, the Philippines is like the jolliest of them all. They're just happy, fun, jolly people. Hey, and you know what? It's been three years. I'm not taking this anymore. I've been pushed around, I've been threatened, I've been thrown in the dungeon, I've been the butt of all the jokes. I'm the Filipino one. This is my time. My time! Ah! <coughs> Welcome to the Philippines. My turn. Okay. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm Ken, and as you know, I'm half Filipino. Years ago, I was looking for a job and I saw this ad asking for a motion graphics animator on Craigslist. Paul and I literally met up at a Jollibee for my interview. He said I was his top three candidates. In reality, there were only three candidates that applied, so technically I didn't lie, but yeah, the other two people kind of sucked, so yeah. Oh, and back then, I had this weird mustache and Paul's hair was basically this thing. Ken and I have been talking for a long time and we agreed Ken definitely has to be in this episode. You've come so far from that Craigslist Jollibee interview, you've earned this. Thanks. Handana Maximula. The Philippines is an interesting country because there's sort of a dichotomy between labels. If you ask a Filipino if they consider themselves Asian or Pacific Islanders, you might get contrasting answers. What do you consider yourself, Ken? Eh, I always thought Pacific Islanders sounded kind of cool, so I usually stuck with that. Ah. So first of all, the Philippines is a tropical archipelago of over 7,000 islands, about 2,000 of which are inhabited, and it is the largest island nation without any land borders or shared island territory with another nation. The country is located in Southeast Asia, straddling the Philippine Sea in the north, the South China Sea in the west, and the Sulu and celibacy in the south. Just to skip away lies the island of Borneo, which is split amongst three nations, at the closest point only about 22 miles or 40 kilometers away from the nearest island that belongs to the Philippines. Now in general, many people will refer to one of the three main island cluster regions that people are a part of. There are Luzon in the north, where you can find the capital Manila and where the half of the population lives, Visaya in the center, and Mindanao in the south. Otherwise, the nation is made up of 17 regions, one of which is autonomous, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. This place has a high level of self rule and autonomy appointed by the government. We'll explain more about this later. If you want to be absolutely technical, Quezon City, a bit north of Manila, is the largest city in the Philippines. However, the surrounding 16 towns and cities by Manila are called Manila Metro, or the National Capital Region, and they basically act as one unit. Otherwise, the largest city outside of the NCR are Davao City in Mindanao and Cebu in the Visayas. Manila has the largest and busiest airport, Ninoy Aquino International Airport, which is basically the hub that services the entire NCR. They also have the busiest shipping port at the Port of Manila. Otherwise, the second largest airport is Cebu Mactan International, and rounding out for third place is Davao City Francisco Bangoy International. In terms of land transport, though, the Philippines is well connected amongst the islands. In fact, the longest highway is the Pan-Philippine Highway that stretches about 3,500 kilometers across the country and connects Luzon, Samar, Liet, and Mindanao with underground tunnels connecting them. Finally, the Philippines has only two territorial disputes, the state of Sabah in Malaysia on North Borneo. The territory once had been part of the Sultanate of Sulu, a Muslim state that existed the 15th century to the 20th century, and that's a whole other story. As for the other dispute, as we mentioned quite a few times already, this whole area known as the Spratly Islands is a complete mess. If you don't know anything about this place, it basically goes like this. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. This is the map showing what everyone claims in the area. This big one right here is China's. Like, yeah, they just kind of pretty much went for all of it. This has even led to a few skirmishes between nations that have built patrol stations on the islands, and when they spot a ship that gets too close, things can get kind of ugly. It's kind of like uh, this. Hey, 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 what are you doing? This is my area. I'm just doing some fishing and research here, you know? Why do you have a shovel then? Are you b building something? Or? Well, technically there's no land protruding from this reef, so uh, there's no land claim. So you're just gonna build your own land? For research. Anyway, anyway, here are some notable spots of interest. Fort Santiago. Magellan's Cross. San Agustin Church. Sagada Hanging Coffins. Aguilando Shrine. Cebu's Philippine Taoist Temple. Shrine of Mama Mary in Tagaytay. The Lapu-Lapu Shrine. Luneta Park. MacArthur Landing Site. Bunawi Rice Terraces. The Malacanang Palace. Vigan has many historical and colonial buildings. The various national museums of history and arts. Tons of amusement parks. And that's not even including all the natural wonders of the Philippines. They have an underground river. The most amazing beautiful beaches in the universe. Hills that look like lumps of chocolate. And there's an island in a lake, in an island, in a lake, in an island. Huh. We should hang out sometime. Yeah, when you have 7,000 tropical islands on a volcanic archipelago, chances are things can get pretty crazy landscape-wise. Which brings us to... 
actual physical land of the Philippines is the biggest treasure you will find here for sure. Anyway, the Philippines lies on the Ring of Fire and is specifically on a tectonic plate named after them, the Philippine Plate. And about 95% of the land is made up of the 11 largest islands. The country was essentially formed through the tectonic activity between the Philippines, Manila, and the Mindanao Trenches, the Mindanao being the second deepest in the world. This makes the country susceptible to small earthquakes and minor volcanic activity. About 53 active volcanoes can be found in all of these largest islands, except for Palawan. The most famous and picturesque of these include these three. See this island here, Kamiguin? It actually has more volcanoes than towns on it. Seven versus five, making it the place with the most number of volcanoes per square kilometer in the world. In fact, the tallest peak in the Philippines is a potentially active volcano, Mount Apo, located in the South Mindanao area. The country has numerous mountain ranges and highlands that dip into the fertile valleys, the largest range being the Cordillera Range in the North Luzon area, hooking into the Sierra Madre Range on the east side, which feeds the longest river of the country, the Cagayan, that flows into the Cagayan Valley. This valley, along with the Central Luzon Valley, are the largest arable croplands and produce nearly all of the rice in the Philippines. The Visayas are known for growing the most sugarcane, whereas Mindanao specializes heavy in coconut and fruit production. Back in Luzon, though, you can find the largest lake in the country, Lake Laguna Dabai, which is actually in the caldera of a dormant volcano. The lake has a weird detached island called Talim and is actually drained by the Pasig River that flows through the capital, Manila. And finally, the country is the heart of typhoon territory. They can come at almost any time of the year. The nation will experience on average about 20 of the turbulent storms annually, which often flood to their many river systems. But yeah, if anything, Filipinos are the most cyclone adapted people on earth. They're used to it. The water has always been kind of their thing. Swimming, sailing, fishing. Just not exactly quite diving into it. Otherwise, the Philippines is one of the 17 mega diverse nations on earth. They actually have the largest level of marine biodiversity in the world within their waters and the highest rate of animal discovery on the planet with 16 new mammal species that were discovered in the past decade alone. They have everything from the longest snake in the world, the reticulated python, the largest fish in the world, whale sharks, seven of the eight known species of giant clam are found in the Philippines, the world's smallest hoofed animal, the Philippine mouse deer, and their national bird is the largest eagle in the world. Economically speaking, the Philippines is considered a newly industrialized nation. It is transitioning out of becoming an agricultural based system to a service and manufacturing based one. They have like three of the top 10 largest malls on earth. Ooh, just you wait, I'm taking the top spot soon. They're one of the fastest growing economies in Asia, and as the 34th largest economy in the world, their GDP purchasing power parity has surpassed the $2 trillion mark. Basically, the Philippines is definitely becoming a key power player in the world stage. It's like, <laughs> we're, we're so rich. <laughs> Wealth and prosperity. Someday. For what it's worth though, mining, fishing, and agriculture are strong industries as well. They are currently the world's largest nickel and abaca or manila hemp producers, and the second largest coconut producer after Indonesia. Tourism though is another important industry to up about 8% of their GDP, employing over 3 million people. And now, food! Now in the Philippines, every region has their own specialty and culinary strange. Yeah, every dish looks like a fairy exploded. Lots of dishes you can eat kumakain kamay, or eat with your hands. Yeah, pretty much everything has rice, and then you're gonna get a lot of grease and salt and vinegar, and a lot of like, I don't care if that looks like it goes there or not, I'm still gonna eat it anyway. Right, Ken? Yeah, that's it's, Filipino food. Yeah. There's really no official national dish, but three meals that are well known for are adobo, lumpia, and sinigang. And in the non-Muslim parts, lechon is a huge deal. There are also dishes like Tagalog steak, tinola, pancit luglug, kare kare, sigstig, tapsilog, balut, kinilaw, and my favorite Filipino dish, palabok. Just put some nice little lemon juice on it. I actually got this at Jollibee. If you don't know what Jollibee is, it's like the most popular fast food chain in the Philippines. It's like if McDonald's and KFC adopted a Filipino baby and they even added spaghetti to their menu for some reason. Otherwise, Filipinos are dessert experts. They love their ube, ube everything, ube ice cream, ube bread, ube pie, ube cakes. Oh, they also have like sapin, sapin, and cassava cakes. Those are the best desserts in my opinion. They also have halo halo, leche flan, turon, bukok pandan, and puto. What you call me? If you're either Latin American or Spanish, you may notice some of those foods are also found in Latin cuisine. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, let's, we'll explain that in... Now only in the Philippines can you find people that have Spanish names, speak English, celebrate an Austronesian culture, and cook Chinese. General MacArthur once said, give me a thousand Filipino soldiers and I will conquer the world. Yeah, for some reason, Filipinos are like the best friends of Asia. Filipinos still have the best attitudes and smiles. They even give time off felony sentences if the prisoners volunteer to take part in a Michael Jackson dance performance to the public. Ah, uh, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, the graph. The country has about 110 million people and is the eighth most populated country in Asia and the 12th most populated country 
country in the world. There are about 175 ethno-linguistic people groups in the Philippines, the majority of whose languages are Austronesian. Of these groups, the largest ones are the Tagalog at about 28%, 13% are Cebuano, 9% are Ilocano, and 8% are Bisaya. The rest are made up of other groups plus a small minority of non-native citizens, mostly Asians and Americans. It's important to note though that the Philippines has about 10.2 million people overseas worldwide. It is one of the largest diaspora populations spanning over 100 countries. The U.S. alone has about 4 million. I mean, they were at one point colonized by the U.S., so go figure. They use the Filipino peso as their currency, they use the types A, B, and C plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Oh, and keep in mind the word Pinoy is synonymous with something that is Filipino. You might see that used a lot. Now back to the ethnic groups thing. Since there are over 175 of them, you would think, how do they all communicate? Well, the Philippines has two official languages. English, which makes them the fifth most English-speaking nation on Earth, and Filipino, which is the standardized version of Tagalog. The Philippine Tagalog language spoken today is a very different from pure Tagalog. It actually has about 14% Spanish, 10% Malay, and 7% English mixed into it with a slew of other borrowed loan words. You can see the influence in words like Pintelador, Guapo, Zapatos, and Familia. Often, Filipinos will substitute an F with a P. Or a V with a B. Or a V with a B. Yeah, same with Koreans, actually. Yeah. <laughs> High five with minimal consonants! Yay! <laughs> oh, and fun fact, Ken taught me this. Uh, in Tagalog, you can actually say an entire conversation just using the syllable ba. For example... Ba? Ba ba. Ba ba. Ba ba ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. Well, that was fun. Otherwise, in the Visayas and Mindanao area, Cebuano is a common language, as well as the other regional tongues like Waray and Daboano. They even have the only Spanish-based Creole in Asia, Chavacano, located in Zaboanga City. Now, the Philippines is unique in that over a past few centuries, they've gone through three periods that shaped their identity. Before European intervention, the Philippines has had a multitude of early civilizations that built kingdoms and dynasties like the Tondo, the Namayan, the Pangasinan, and the Sulu Sultanate. Many of these kingdoms had their own indigenous writing system, such as the Babayan, Buhid, Eskayan, and Kulitan. Genetically, Filipinos are classified as belonging to the broader Austronesian people group, with their closest cousins being the Micronesians, like the Mariana Islanders, Guam, and Palau. Although over the years, many people have mixed, and today it is speculated that somewhere around one-fifth or more of the population may have some kind of Chinese ancestry. After the Spanish came in, they adopted many of the customs, traditions, and cultural traits which have Spanish roots. Their own country is named after Spanish King Philip. The biggest trait, though, would be the fact that they are predominantly Catholic, at about 81% of the population adhering to the faith. The rest are mostly Protestant, with a small Muslim minority in the South Mindanao area. The Philippines is the largest Christian nation in Asia, fifth largest Christian nation on Earth, and third largest Catholic nation after Brazil and Mexico. They have so many holidays and festivals devoted to Catholic themes, like All Saints Day, Holy Week, and Easter, and of course, the largest one, Christmas. The Philippines has the longest Christmas season out of anywhere else on Earth. Okay, so now we're just gonna rapid fire a list of 12 fun cultural facts for the Philippines. Filipinos have a ton of superstitions. For example, whistling at night will turn you into a werewolf. For formal occasions, you may see Filipinos wearing traditional barongs for men and Maria Clara or Mestiza dresses for women. There are many other traditional costumes and customs for the other 170 ethnic groups. Too many to cover, but it goes everywhere from feathers, coconut fibers, hair dresses, tribal tattoos, and so on. Speaking of which, the Philippines dominates major international beauty pageants with a grand total of 15 victories at the Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss International, and Miss Earth competitions. Basketball and boxing are the most popular sports by far. They have the oldest basketball league in Asia and the second oldest in the world after the United States. And come on, we all know Pacquiao. The Philippines is the leading nation to train and export nurses abroad. It's been said at one point, every Filipino has their should I just drop everything and become a nurse moment in their life crisis. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I've had those. And the word balikbayan means returner or returning family. It is used when someone comes back from expat work abroad. You might hear the honorific title of po or opal for elders and a lot of people often raise the backs of the hands of their elders to their forehead as a sign of respect and say bless. In the Philippines, you have your name and you have your Pinoy nickname and they get really weird and creative. Pepsi, Bing Bong, Jelly Boy, Pinky, Bum Bum, and Earl. Every Filipino on every island in every region can tell you Filipinos are obsessed with karaoke. The first karaoke machine was actually patented by a Filipino, Roberto del Rosario, even though some Japanese dude invented it, but he patented it. Obviously, that means music is a big deal in the Philippines. Besides taking modern cues from American pop, they also have traditional styles. Instruments include things like Gudyapi, Kilitang, 
Kalimutang, Gimbal, Kubing, and Togali. In addition, there are many different styles of dance, but the most famous one considered the national dance is Tinikling, a dance done between two pairs of perpendicular bamboo poles that are clapped together as percussion tools, and the dancers must weave their feet in and out in the spaces before getting hit or tripped. Now, on a bit of a more objective note, we do have to talk about some of the controversies. The Philippines is beautiful, but if you've been keeping up with current events, they do have their fair share of issues that have made headlines. We don't sugarcoat everything here. Human trafficking, whether in the sex industry, slavery, or organ smuggling has been a problem in certain areas. And even though anti-trafficking acts have been passed by the government, enforcement has not always been on par. The drug trade has also been a major inconvenience for decades, affecting millions of people in the country. This has led to the new controversial laws instituted by President Duarte, which encouraged the public to seek bounty in exchange for hunting down drug pushers. Many have died in the process. And finally, you have the Moro conflict, an insurgency in the predominantly Muslim Mindanao region, which sought to take parts of Eastern Malaysia and break away through conflict. The fight has been going on for nearly half a century, and now it's just ending at the turn of the 21st century. Yeah, kind, kind of. of. For what it's worth though, in the Philippines, everyone is family at the end. You don't have to be related to anyone to call someone ate or kuya. There's even a word, bayanihan, which means something like helping one another through community spirit without expecting anything in return. In any case, we gotta finish off this segment with history. Austronesians. Tribal kingdoms and sultanates. This guy came to the islands. Catholicism comes in. Lapu-Lapu and Magellan dies in battle. Five Spanish dudes follow through. They finally become a colony of Spain. The galleon trade. British Philippines. And then back to Spain. The Treaty of Paris. Philippine Revolution. The Spanish-American War. First Philippine Republic. Philippine-American War. American Occupation. World War II, Japan invades. American push them back. Finally, Philippine independence. Ferdinand Marcos turned from president to dictator. Martial law. This guy gets killed because he was against the regime. People power revolution in 1986. Growth from agricultural society to an industrial one. And here we are today. And now we finish off with the notable famous people condensed. Some famous people you guys, the Pinoy geography suggested we mentioned in this episode include Lapu Lapu, Jose Rizal, these two saints, Melcora Aquino, Manuel L. Quezon, La Candula, Josefa Yanes Escoda, and Vicente Lim, Carlos Peña. Romulo. And all the Miss Universe winners. And there's a ton of Americans with Filipino or partial Filipino descent. Yeah, you can see there's lots of American Filipinos. Those two get along pretty tight. We'll explain more on how that happened in... in because of the long history in the Philippines being colonized by two major Western powerhouses, it would make sense that it would have ties with the outside world in many different ways. For friends, the Philippines is generally close with all the ASEAN nations and does great business with them, particularly Indonesia and Malaysia, their closest neighbors. The Marshall Islands, Palau, and the federal states of Micronesia are all cousin countries, many of which have Filipino migrants in them. And they all share the same history of being former US territories and US influenced states. Of course, Spain will always be in the back of their minds as the former colonizers that they gained much influence from. Although Filipinos are not considered Latino, the Spanish and many Latin Americans kind of see them as like the adopted Asians that totally fit in their family. It's like, come on, you're Catholic, you eat flan, every fifth word you speak is Spanish, you're basically one of us. Interestingly enough, the relationship with Mexico has historically been always strong. The Philippines was ruled under a Mexico-based vice royalty of New Spain. The Manila Galleons were Spanish trading ships, which for two and a half centuries linked the Philippines with Mexico across the Pacific Ocean, making one or two round trip voyages per year between the ports of Acapulco and Manila. And Mexican traditions were brought in like the Day of the Dead and Champorado. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Filipinos would probably say, even though colonial years were a little bit bumpy, ultimately the USA and South Korea. South Korea was one of their closest best friends from the 20th century on. World War II really bonded with them after the Japanese occupation years, and they supported each other diplomatically. Koreans are the top number one tourist demographic that visit the Philippines. Koreans kind of admire the fact that even though they were both influenced by the US, Filipinos speak better English, whereas Filipinos practically obsess over Korean products and media. Ah, oh, us. That's Korean why we're... Korean <laughs> For the USA, ties were close ever since they became their colony in 1898. The US also had the largest number of overseas Filipinos at over 4 million, most of whom live on the West Coast states like Hawaii and California. They are one of the oldest Asian partners of the US, they have a mutual defense treaty, and they are the largest export partner and second largest import after China. American pop culture dominates much of the youth influence, Hollywood studios love filming there, and Gallup polls have shown that the USA is favored on average by over 90% of the people asked, making it one of the most pro-American countries on the planet. And Ken, you take the conclusion. In conclusion, if you enter a room full of Asians, you definitely know who the Filipinos are. While everyone's so uptight, we're the ones singing karaoke and somersaulting. You could just feel the energy of a Filipino. There's a touch of Latin flavor with American pop undertones. But in the end, no matter what island, you're immediately considered part of the Pinoy family. Ken, you're one of my best friends. I love you, man. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Stay tuned. Poland is coming up next.